السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters, if I were to ask you who is your protector? As a believer, you would say Allah. If I were to ask you who is sufficient for you? As a believer, you would say Allah. If I were to ask you that who is going to guard you from evil? you would say Allah. That is so, so true. We need to be convinced that Allah is sufficient for us and He is the best disposer of our affairs, which means anything that's going to happen to me, Allah will take care of me. Allah will make sure that He navigates me. He helps me navigate through the right path, the right channel, so that ultimately at the end, I come out in the right place. Subhanallah. So I might be going through a few obstacles and hurdles right now, but I'm going to come out in paradise. I'm going to come out in a much better place. These days will not last forever. When the Prophet ﷺ was faced with an army that he was told about, that was well equipped, that was heading in his direction, he made one supplication, the same supplication that was made by the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, when he was cast into the hot burning flame by his own father. He said, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of our affairs. As a result, Allah granted Ibrahim alayhi salam safety and security. And as a result, Allah granted the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his people, the companions, Allah granted them victory. Yes, the war took place, but guess what? They won. They won the war against all odds. We've spoken about the Battle of Badr against all odds. So many times this has happened. And ultimately, finally, what happened? Look where Islam is today. Look at the victory of Makkah. There may have been certain losses during the life of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and at the time of the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhum. But ultimately, there was victory. Where is the evidence of it? the number of Muslims on earth today. You and I are sitting, studying the Quran and the Sunnah that they fought for. They fought to actually pass it on. They passed it on. We got it. That's a victory. That's a great success. Some of them lost their lives. Allah will grant them martyrdom and Jannah. But they delivered the goods. They struggled for many years. They lost some of the battles. Subhanallah. But ultimately they were victorious. The, the purpose was achieved. Subhanallah. So this is a dua you need to constantly read when you're feeling unsafe, when you get some bad news, when you're feeling insecure, Allah will heal you. Just call out to Allah, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. The minute you hear someone wants to, someone is threatening you, Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. You're threatening me, Allah is sufficient for me and He is the best disposer of my affairs. Allah says there is nothing that anyone can do against you. Nothing. So Allah will comfort you, heal you. Allah gives you the hope and I'm convinced nothing can ever happen to me except that which Allah has willed. Allah will something, nothing can stop it. Allah did not will something, nobody can do it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from that beautiful comfort. Now, in life we sometimes hear bad words against us and really bad words and People harass us and they trouble us because of our belief. I'm a Muslim. To practice Islam is not easy. Sometimes I may be a Muslim in a family that's not Muslim, that doesn't accept the fact that I'm a Muslim. Sometimes I may be a Muslim in a family of Muslims who are not practicing and I want to practice and they simply don't want. And sometimes I... I'm struggling because I'm the only one in my society. Maybe I'm living in a country that has rules that are so backward that they don't allow people to practice their faith. Subhanallah. What do I do? Well, Allah has told us about this. Allah says to the messenger, peace be upon him, verse number 186 of Surat Ali Imran. Allah says, وَلَتَسْمَعُنَّ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا أَذًا كَثِيرًا Allah says, you will hear from people of other faiths, perhaps the Jews, the Christians, and even the uh, polytheists. Allah says, you will hear from them a lot of other. 
you will hear a lot of harm, rumors. They will say false things. They will say the worst of things. They will harass you. They will trouble you. They will probably not allow you at some point to even follow your faith and so on. Allah says, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ if you bear sabr and taqwa, same two qualities we've been speaking about for so many days. So this element of sabr and taqwa is actually an element of healing. Allah wants you to worship Him, bear patience, practice restraint, and develop a relationship with Him. Fulfill, you continue fulfilling your obligations unto Allah. Subhanallah. Allah says, وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا If you have sabr and taqwa, that's the best thing you could do. Allah says, we know that they're going to talk about you. They're going to make it difficult for you. They're going to say very nasty things about you. They say nasty things about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu They say totally unfounded things about Islam, about the Quran. Allah says, wait, take it in your stride. We will clear it. We will clarify it. As for the Quran, there is no chance that they can enter it with any negativity. Because Allah says, we revealed the book. We will protect it. That's what Allah says. So I don't need to worry. Same applies where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, bear sabr and taqwa, no matter what they've said, it's not going to affect you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after that, Allah tells us another beautiful, beautiful method of healing yourself. And that is to contemplate over the creation of Allah, the skies, the earth, the rivers, the, the, the oceans, subhanallah the mountains, the greenery, the plants, the flowers, the animals, the birds, the fish, the human beings, subhanAllah, the creation of Allah. Think about the day, the night, the planets, subhanAllah. What Allah has created, look at the moon, look at everything and think about the greatness of the one who made all those things. Ibrahim alayhi salam looked at the sun and the moon and the stars and subhanallah, it drew him, it led him to worshipping the maker of all of that. And it developed a beautiful bond for him with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is telling us in verse number 190 of Surah Allah Imran, Allah is saying, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al-layli wa nahari la ayatin li uli al-albab. Allah says, indeed, in the creation of the skies and the earth and the rotation of the day and the night, there are signs for those with intellect, those who remember Allah, those who praise Allah, they remember Allah standing and sitting and on their sides and they think about all oh, the creation of Allah and then they tell themselves, they say, Rabbana, O oh our Rabb, O oh our Lord, you haven't created all this in vain for nothing. Subhanak, glory be to you. Save us from hellfire. The creator is the one who will protect you because he is the one you're going to return to. You were with him before your date of birth and you will be with him after your date of death. As simple as that. So if you, wherever you were, Allah says, we're going to bring you back and we're going to give you something even better known as Jannatul Firdaus, paradise. So that is something that my brothers and sisters, we always need to think about. Do you know, uh, Allah tells us to ponder over the creation. Look at nature, go out, see, think. Because he who made all of this is far greater than anything that anyone else has made. SubhanAllah. A lot of hope. And there is a lot of healing going out and looking at nature. Not just to see, wow, and that's it. No, say, mashallah, tabarakallah, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, subhanal khaliq. All praise is due to Allah. Look at the creator. And towards the end of that surah, Surah Allah Imran, Allah tells us, don't become obsessed by what we've given others. We've given the believers and the disbelievers. When we've given the disbelievers, don't become obsessed and think that's a sign of our pleasure. Allah says it's just a temporary moment of pleasure for them. And later on, they've lost. They wouldn't get anything. Allah says, you need to build your relationship with Allah. Perhaps yours is awaiting you later. Whatever Allah has given you here, be thankful. Don't become obsessed by what we've given others. And don't think for a moment it's a sign of our happiness with them. It's just a sign we've given them for whatever reason. Later on, we will give you perhaps 
in the hereafter. May Allah grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala.